Solomon really perfected the art of the modern occult through through his desperation to ward off the spiritual world after God left and abandoned him. If you want to marry the queen, I think it was the Queen of Sheba, you have to worship Moloch. So he sacrifices to Moloch, and he said the second he did it, I immediately felt the spirit of God depart from me. And this is at the end of the Testament of Solomon. And then he said, as I continue to do it, I felt it completely abandon me, and I became the sport of the demons I once controlled. Spent the rest of his life tormented by demons and giving in to all these different things. Guess how he tried to control them? At, now that God wasn't protecting him, he became a master of witchcraft to try to force these things. He tried to take it into his own. He's like, God's abandoned me. They're going to kill me. They're going to ruin my life. And so he comes up with all these spells he wrote. I remember so-and-so said he hates gallbladders. And so he started, get me three gallbladders of this. And he basically was became a sorcerer in order to ward off the demonic world, which is now at his doorstep. You know, this is why you have to read stuff for yourself. Because this gentleman just took a whole bunch of information and then got most of it wrong and some of it right. So this whole thing about Solomon and Solomon giving into demons and then becoming a controller of demons. Many people on here are going to cite that, you know, Solomon wrote a book of demonology. And you're going to talk about that. But before you talk about that, the lesser keys of Solomon or the actual name of it is the little keys of Solomon. You first have to read the Testament of Solomon. Now, before you read the Testament of Solomon, you need to understand where that book come from, came from and what it is, what it's about. So I'm going to give you a short version of both of those books and I'll get into that whole thing he said about Sheba. So you can pick out what this guy got wrong as I tell you about it. All right. So the first thing, the Testament of Solomon is a pseudographical book, meaning that it was not written by Solomon himself, but it was written by somebody who, you know, wanted to give you some fan fiction about Solomon because Solomon was supposedly this wise guy, but then God had left Solomon. And so they want, and because he started worshiping the deities of the women to which he had married, he had 300 wives, 700 concubines. Because he started worshiping them, he lost his wisdom or kinship with God and then God abandoned him. And then he comes back a little bit later on after being in the wilderness for a time. So from that, people wanted more detail. They wanted more information. So the Testament of Solomon was written most likely somewhere in the first century. But it wasn't compiled until the 15th century. So you understand the difference. It was written in the first century. The writings had been moving around. And then somebody compiled it and put it all together in the 15th century. And if you understand mankind's mindset from the roughly 18th or 19th century back, magic was believed and magic was a big deal. Controlling demons was a big deal. Demons walking around with some walk around money was a big deal. So people believe that they can control demons through different in, within different religions. So the Testament of Solomon would have been something that people would have reasonably believed from first century all the way up. And since he was in control of all these things, so he, he eventually controlled all these demons. So in the Testament of Solomon, some of the things that you'll notice when you read it is that Solomon did not want it to marry the Queen of Sheba, which caused him to start worshiping demons and have to do, commit to the Molech sacrifice. The Queen of Sheba had nothing to do with that. When you read it, it's going to say that he was he wanted to have sex with a Shulamite woman. Now the question begs, who or what is a Shulamite woman? The Shulamite people, which is somewhat fictitional because we don't have much information about them other than within writings. The Shulamite people were people who lived within the Levant, within the whole area of Mesopotamia, somewhere around the uh, mountain of, I think it's Gibbon or Ghiblees and Jezel and the city of Jezel, somewhere around there is where they believe the Shulamite people live. They believe that they were a dark skinned people or they call them swarthy. So that means that they were darker of skin, which fits with the songs of Solomon to which he talks about the woman when she says, women of Israel, don't be act an ass towards me because of my dark skin. So this Shulamite woman has nothing to do with who they have made up as the Queen of Sheba. Because even the story of the Queen of Sheba 
is completely a fabrication. Maybe there was an envoy from Queen Candace who came to visit, but she would not have been the Queen of Sheba at the time. At the time frame that they placed Solomon, she would have been a queen or a sister to the king, actually, and, be, and then given the title of Candace or Queen Mother. She would have been part of the, D, the DMT empire, or it, because we can't pronounce it correctly, some people pronounce it the Da'amat. But the Da'amat empire is more than likely who she would have been a part of, possibly the Sabaeans. One of those two are the most likely candidates coming from that southern southeastern tip of Arabia. Then she goes, she visits, but this woman and the, that area, they worship many different gods. It was very much a polytheistic society that was also henotheistic at the same time. We have multiple gods and we believe that your God exists as well. They were worshipers of the Canaanite religion. So Yahweh and El would have been known, but they were worshipers of the Egyptian religions, of the Hittite religions, of the um, poly, poly Arabian religions. So they would have believed in a star and all these, uh, a star was a moon goddess. I mean, no, a star was a sky god. Um, Hab, Habra or Hashaba, something like that, was the moon god. So they would have been, they worship many gods. She could have worshiped, she would have been worshiping so many different gods, it's, it's impossible to determine which god. And there was never this pregnancy, there was never the King Menelik and all that kind of thing. These things were later creations. Um, because then the Axiom Empire takes over. The Axiom Empire had multiple god worships all throughout its time frame. So you got the the, uh, the Demont or the Sabaeans that are occurring from the 10th century BCE all the way down to around the first century BCE. After the first century, around the first century BCE, first second century BCE, you then get the Axiom Empire and Later on, you get the uh, Zakwe Empire, which then creates the whole Queen of Sheba, the Tawidu Orthodox Church in Ethiopia, and so on and so forth. And they manifest and create this legend. But the Songs of Solomon, I mean, the Song of Solomon is a fabrication of those people, of one of those Sabaean or the Demot uh, people, one of those. But anyway, in the story, the way that Solomon gets control over the demons is the fact he sees a young boy is um, taken over by a demon. His life is sucked out of his right thumb from that demon. And then Solomon prays and the angel Michael, the archangel Michael, gives him a ring with a pentagram on it. He throws the ring at the demon. The demon then gets sealed by the ring. The demon comes under his control. Then he goes and he imprints the ring on Beelzebub, which then gives him control over all the demons. And then he is able to have the temple built. And he said that in this book, he built the temples. And then he have many different interviews and conversations with all these different demons. And so he learns to control all the demons. He never loses, he loses this way a little bit with God when he is dealing with the Shulamite woman and he crushes five lotus to rep in worship of her God. And then he loses some of his place with God, but then he gets it all back. It is not until the 17th century that you get the writings of Solomon's book of demonology, which is all the magic and the spells and all this sort of thing. And in 1600s, people like, I think John Dees was around at that time. They were very big in thinking that they can control demons and spiritual things through witchcrafts and all that kind of stuff. So none of this actually applies to the person of Solomon if he ever existed. These are all later creations by people who are trying to give fan fiction to, they're giving fan fiction to fill gaps of questions that people are asking. But when creators just make shit up like that, instead just tell all the story and, and really at the end of the day, you don't know what really, really happened. You just know what somebody wrote and when they wrote it. And then you have to think about why they will be writing it. Uh, so if you're out there in, with the grimoires trying to practice these things that you read in the Lesser Keys of Solomon or uh, in the Sol Testament, Testament of Solomon, you're better off just making up your own spells, making up your own sigils and things of that nature. <laughs> Please subscribe to the channel. Tell me what you think. 
always remember you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibrations.